Hey guys, welcome back to another Tech Up Teardown video. On uh, today's episode, we're going to be talking about uh, and tearing down this 14-inch MacBook Pro M2 model A2779. Uh, this is very similar to the M1, M3, and M4 models. Uh, just slight differences between the, the those four, um, but other than that, very similar. Uh, if you guys are looking for any parts for your MacBooks, we'll have them linked in the description below. Uh, but let's go ahead and get into today's video. So we're going to start by flipping the unit over and removing the eight pentalobe screws across the bottom. And after removing those screws, we're going to use a suction cup to help remove the bottom case. And to remove the bottom case, we're going to push the top case assembly away from ourselves and pull the bottom case towards ourselves. All right, so now that we have the bottom case off, uh, you can get a look at how it's uh, retained on the bottom case or the top case here. So you see the fingers at the top, which go to our top case uh, up here by our Wi Fi vent module, as well as the uh, clips that go on either side here on the logic board, right below the uh, retention screws for the logic board, these little standoffs, that's where those clip on. And that's how our bottom case is secured to the top case. So the very first thing we're going to do is uh, remove these two T3 screws. These are the retention screws for the trackpad flex cable. And we're going to go ahead and unplug this cable next to the trackpad cable first. This is the battery management unit flex cable. Uh, this tells the logic board the charge on the battery and you know we'll let it turn on if it sees a charge or anything like that also reports to the board what percent your battery is at uh, so now you can go ahead and unplug the trackpad flex cable we have to peel back the battery management unit flex cable here which i'm actually just going to go ahead and fully disconnect Then I'm going to take a T5 and unscrew the pancake screw that connects the jumper from the logic board to the battery board. And now the unit is discharged and free to work on if you're doing any other work. But for us, we're going to go ahead and continue the tear down. So continuing with this T5, I'm going to go ahead and unscrew uh, these four silver T5s that secure uh, not only the Wi-Fi vent module, but also the LCD display cables to the top case at the top here. And I'm also going to remove the T5s for the uh, LCD hinge covers. And on either side of the Wi-Fi vent module are more long silver T5s. We're gonna go ahead and remove. Now I'm going to switch to a T3 screwdriver and I'm just going to start on the right hand side here, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and remove these two T3s in this retention bracket uh, for the LCD proximity sensor. Uh, so as it is in this sensor's name, uh, this tells the unit when to turn on or off the screen uh, based on the position of the LCD. We're going to go ahead and move inside here and remove the T3s and retention brackets for the LCD display connectors where they actually plug into the logic board. We're also going to remove the three T3s here 
that secure uh, the Wi-Fi antennas to the logic board connection points. And now we're going to take a PL1 and remove the nine across the top PL1s that secure the Wi-Fi vent module in the unit. Now we're going to go ahead and unplug the Wi-Fi antenna cables and remove our Wi-Fi antenna bracket. So as you can see, the Wi-Fi uh, bracket is also the vents, goes right out the rear here. Um, if you have really bad connection to Wi-Fi, it keeps dropping. Check if these are connected or if your cable is, sorry, if the cable is broken, uh, but also if the antenna bracket itself is broken. It could be the cause of your uh, connection issues there. Now we're going to go ahead and disconnect the LCD cables here. And these kind of clip over the top case. So we're going to go ahead and remove them. Underneath are these little pads um, that have two pins that go into the top case. This just helps secure everything and make sure the cables can't be cut uh, by the top case. Now we're going to go ahead and remove the uh, hinge covers here on either side. And we're going to take a T8 screwdriver and remove uh, the six T8s, three at each hinge. And with those T8s removed, we can now open the unit up in order to remove the LCD. And here we have our LCD assembly uh, with the LCD proximity sensor, which as you can see, uh, is kind of just a little optical or magnetic sensor, forget which one it is off the top of my head, uh, that reads the position of it in relation to the hinge. So as you move the hinge, uh, the sensor will know exactly where it is and either turn your LCD off or turn it off. So now I'm going to go ahead and go around the logic board with a T3 and remove all of the uh, retention brackets for our various connectors. Uh, the top right one here is going to be the MagSafe 3 charging port. And below here with this long bracket are our two uh, Thunderbolt 4 uh, USB-C ports. And below that is going to be our uh, 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so our microphone headphone jack. And on the left hand side here at the very top is going to be our touch ID. And then on the left hand side here is going to be our final USB-C port with our HDMI port uh, on the board directly above it. And now we have four covered T5s that we need to reveal. Now we're gonna go around and unplug connectors starting on the top left with again, our touch ID uh, flex cable. This is our power button touch ID right here. Our uh, left hand USB-C port our left-hand speaker. Our left-hand CPU fan. Our keyboard flex cable right here in the center. 
our keyboard backlighting cable right next to it. Our right hand CPU fan. Our right hand speaker. Our microphone array. Our audio headphone jack. Our two right hand USB C ports. And our MagSafe port. So now with everything disconnected, we can grab a T5 and unscrew, what was the T3? Unscrew the logic board retention screws. And now we're gonna take a T6 and remove the three remaining screws as these are T6s, not T5s. So now the board is ready to be removed. It is sort of uh, wedged on the left hand side here. So it's easiest to pick up this side of the board and come out that way. Uh, do note that these grommets will not come out with the board. Uh, they will stay in with the fans. So you will have to uh, uncover the grommets from the heat sink as you go up. So we're going to go ahead and pry up. Oh. Don't forget the two T5s down here, which are just out of my view, but you guys can see them. And now we can go ahead, remove the board, making sure to not grab any of our connections. All right, and that's our board now removed. As you can see, it's a little bit dirty, but there's no additional connectors on the newer M series, unlike the older Intel ones where they would have the display connector at the top, middle, and the back side here. And now we're going to grab a T3 and remove uh, these three screws around the CPU fans. Now we're going to take a T5 and remove the last screw at, on each of the uh, cooling fans. And go ahead and remove them. And now we can go ahead and take a T5 screwdriver and remove our ports on the right hand side. Starting with our headphone jack. And now we're going to remove the USB-C ports. And there is two types of screws. So that not only the T5s uh, that are actually aluminum. And there's going to be T3s at the top side here. So these two T5s at the base of the MagSafe port. And then right here and here are two T2s. Now we have our MagSafe 3 port removed. We just have the two T5s as well as the uh, USB-C port on the left hand side. Now we're going to remove all the T5s around the trackpad. So there's going to be two in each corner and two in the center. And we're just going to lift the unit up in order to drop the trackpad out the bottom there. 
So our trackpad has multiple components here that you don't really think about. Of course, we have the trackpad flex cable, which we'll go ahead and unplug right now. And now we have the part everyone forgets. So all of these washers here around these uh, screw points are actually what's responsible for the unit having the click that it has. If you were to reinstall a new trackpad and not have these washers in there, I wouldn't have that tactile click or feel. So at this point, uh, this is our top case assembly. Uh, we can remove the speakers, which I'm not going to do in today's episode. Um, but if you are to, we recommend the use of some isopropyl alcohol around the outside and then using a plastic spudger to uh, get in there and break up the adhesive. The speakers do typically break when you take them out especially on the 14 inch models. The 16 inch ones are a little bit easier to remove uh, because of the pull tabs. But this one, there isn't really any pull tabs. You kind of just have to get under there. Um, and sometimes they do break when you take them out, which is why we're not going to remove them in today's teardown. Uh, but that would be how you replace your speakers. We're also not going to be removing the battery. Um, but if you do need to remove the battery, there are pull tabs on the ends of the battery here. Uh, let me see if I can show you one. Here it is. So yeah, as you can see on the end of the battery here, there are the beginnings of the pull tabs, uh, which you can uh, pull out on each side. There's gonna be two on each cell, so four on each side here. And if you flip it over, you're gonna see some pull tabs at the top in these little cutouts here. So those are the pull tabs for the center cells, and then everything will come out once you pull those out. But that's going to be uh, today's teardown. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Again, if you saw any parts or tools you needed in today's video, uh, we will have them linked in the description below. If you guys are interested in having us do a repair or data recovery, we offer mail-in services. Learn more in the description, but, but we'll see you guys in the next episode.